of what he was telling us. Scott Ritter, the Chief United Nations Weapons Inspector from 1991 to 1998, stated six months before the 2003 invasion that Iraq had been disarmed following the first Gulf War. What I'm telling you is that Iraq has been disarmed. Disarmed. But the bottom line is for Iraq to have weapons of mass destruction today, they would have had to rebuild a manufacturing base since 1998 when inspectors left. And until someone can demonstrate this, you don't have a weapon of mass destruction. You don't have a threat. That was not only Scott Ritter's view. Six and a half months before 9-11, Colin Powell also reported that Saddam Hussein had not developed weapons of mass destruction and that he did not even pose a threat of conventional power against his neighbors. Just more than a month before 9-11, Condoleezza Rice agreed, saying that the United States had been able to keep Hussein's arms from him and that his military forces had not been rebuilt. He has not developed any significant capability with respect to weapons of mass destruction. He is unable to project conventional power against his neighbors. Uh, we are able to keep arms from him. His military forces have not been rebuilt. Likewise, in September 2002, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the intelligence arm of the Department of Defense, reported there is no reliable information on whether Iraq is producing and stockpiling chemical weapons. On September 7, 2002, at Camp David, President Bush and Prime Minister Tony Blair spoke to the public through news reporters. Bush represented that a 1998 International Atomic Energy Agency report stated that Iraq was six months away from building a nuclear weapon. I don't know what more evidence we need, commented the president. We just heard the prime minister talk about uh, the new report. Uh, I would remind you that when the inspectors first went into Iraq, and were denied, finally denied access. Uh, a report came out of the atomic, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the IAEA, that they were six months away from developing a weapon. I don't know what more evidence we need. Indeed, there was no evidence. President Bush's representation was a total fabrication. There was never a report like the one described by President Bush. In fact, the 1998 International Atomic Energy Agency report stated there were no indications there remained in Iraq any physical capability for production of weapon-usable nuclear material of any practical significance. In the build-up to the war, President Bush invoked Iraq's purchase of aluminum tubes, supposedly for building nuclear weapons, as a reason to go to war. He repeated that claim in his State of the Union address on January 28, 2003, less than two months before the invasion of Iraq. Our intelligence sources tell us that he has attempted to purchase high-strength aluminum tubes suitable for nuclear weapons production. What President Bush, Dick Cheney, and others failed to tell the American people was that the aluminum tubes claim was vigorously disputed by the Bureau of Intelligence and Research the intelligence agency within the State Department, and by the Department of Energy, the department with the most expertise regarding nuclear weapons. In October 1, 2002, in a national intelligence estimate delivered to the White House, the Bureau of Intelligence and Research addressed the claim about aluminum tubes in the context of the Bush administration's general claim about an Iraqi nuclear buildup. According to the Bureau of Intelligence and Research and the Department of Energy, the tubes were not intended for use in Iraq's nuclear weapons program, and there was no evidence that Iraq was rebuilding a nuclear capability. Less than two months before the invasion of Iraq by the United States, the IAEA informed the United Nations Security Council that Iraqi authorities were fully cooperating with weapons inspectors and to date, the inspectors had found no evidence that Iraq has revived its nuclear weapons program since the elimination of the program in the 1990s. The IAEA also expressly disagreed with President Bush's claims about the aluminum tubes. 
the deceit by President Bush and others in his administration about Iraq's supposed nuclear program did not stop with the discredited claims about the aluminum tubes. In his 2003 State of the Union address, President Bush said Saddam Hussein was trying to purchase uranium from an African nation to make nuclear weapons. The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. President Bush fraudulently withheld from the American people that the Bureau of Intelligence and Research disagreed with that claim, labeling it highly dubious. President Bush's representations in a State of the Union address constituted a terrible fraud upon the American people, made all the more outrageous by the fact that he was misleading us into an illegal, disastrous war. Although many members of Congress were certainly complicit, that does not diminish President Bush's culpability for deceiving the American people. Twelve days before President Bush commenced the war, the International Atomic Energy Agency Director Mohammed al Baradi informed the United Nations Security Council that the documents that form the sole basis for the claim that Saddam Hussein was attempting to purchase uranium were crude forgeries. More than one month before the invasion of Iraq, Hans Blix, the chief United Nations weapons inspector in Iraq, reported that inspectors had found no evidence of weapons of mass destruction apart from a few empty chemical munition shells. Another grand deceit by President Bush and top officials in his administration was the outrageous claim that Iraq was somehow in cahoots with al-Qaeda. They also deceitfully tied Saddam Hussein to the 9-11 attacks on the United States. The consensus in the intelligence community was and always has been that there was no operational connection between Iraq and al-Qaeda and no involvement whatsoever by Iraq in the 9-11 attacks. That consensus was set forth in a presidential daily brief provided to President Bush 10 days after 9-11. That consensus was the same as the conclusion of every investigation since the occupation began, including the report of the Pentagon's Inspector General in April 2007. This is what President Bush knew or should have known one week before the invasion of Iraq. The consensus of the federal government's intelligence agencies was that there was no operational tie between Iraq and al-Qaeda and no evidence that Iraq had any connection to the 9-11 attacks on the United States. Iraq was fully cooperating with United Nations weapons inspectors and the inspectors had found no evidence that Iraq possessed weapons of mass destruction. The Defense Intelligence Agency had concluded there was no reliable information on Iraq's possession of chemical weapons. The Department of Energy and the Bureau of Intelligence and Research had concluded that the Bush administration's claims about Iraq using aluminum tubes in a nuclear program were groundless. The Bureau of Intelligence and Research had concluded that President Bush's contention that Iraq had purchased uranium from Africa was highly dubious and that the documents that form the sole basis for that contention were crude forgeries. Iraq did not pose an imminent threat to the United States. As former CIA Director George Tenet has since made clear, intelligence analysts never maintained that Iraq posed an imminent threat. Because the Bush administration was not acting in self-defense, the tragic invasion and occupation of Iraq has been utterly illegal. It constitutes a crime against peace, the same crime for which people were convicted at Nuremberg. It is a violation of the Brian Kellogg Pact, which was initiated by the United States, the Nuremberg Convention, and the United Nations Charter, all of which prohibit attacks against one country by another unless in self-defense.